Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Also, the Bible tells us that I was, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So now we are here. I even heard myself. So we are here in God's house one more time to give God praise and give God honor for what God is doing in our lives continuously and how we are so blessed, so blessed to be able to breathe again and again and again. So um, let us worship God today. Worship God like you've never worshiped God before. Feel God's presence as, as you never had before. I invite you into this space. I invite you in this moment. So we will worship God today in spirit and in truth. I'm going to do a couple of things that might be a little unusual for you, but I'm going to do the announcements first. So we all survived. I survived Work Smart yesterday. <laughs> and uh, So it was a little chilly out when I was on the grill. And I had a jacket on, but when I left yesterday, I, I hung it up in my office. And as soon as I opened the door, <sighs> so I've got to put that in the laundry before I wear that again. If not, they'll say, you still at work smart. <laughs> but yesterday, um, we served 658 in the dining room, 571 carryouts. So a total of 1,229, only a difference of 89 from 2019. So give, your, give God a clap of praise and also all those who had anything that whatever participation, whatever you did, why don't you just stand? I guess everybody will stand up, but if you... Thank you all so much. This is what ministry, this is what community is about. And this is what you are about. This is your vision in this local place, in this location. This is what God has placed you here for, for such a time as this. To open up your hearts to the community in ways that will um, not only surprise them, but also will allow you to see all the things that you can do when you come together collectively. So I thank you for being that, that light that sits on this corner in this community. So a few announcements. Altar Flowers this morning is in the honor of all the ones that we have lost this past year. And we will do a, a, a service later on um, for our loved ones. Uh, Sunday school will be in the education building immediately following worship. And also adult faith exploration will meet downstairs after worship service. So also, if you want to buy um, sausage, I know we're going to say sausage for the next week or so, but uh, there's a $7 per pound for the cook and $6 per pound for the raw sausage. And it'll be over across the street after worship in the education building. Let's see. Okay, here's the other thing. Um, Driver Henderson, can you, can you come forward, please, if you can? So last week, uh, Mr. Henderson came to me and said, Pastor, I would like to join Emmanuel United Church of Christ. So I said to him, well, we don't own the rights to, to positions in church or whatever, so... If, if God has lead you into this place, then we welcome you into our family. And driver, I would like to tell you again, like I told you last Sunday, welcome to this family. We thank you for um, hearing God's word and responding. And now that you are here, 
We know that you're just gonna roll your sleeves up. You're gonna get busy. <laughs> you're gonna get busy for what God has for you specifically. And then in that, you will join this group collectively to carry out the work that God has put on your heart. Amen? Amen. So when you all get a chance after service, won't you greet your new brother in love and give him a, a right hand of fellowship? Amen? Amen. Thank you, sir. I have a ticket. I have a ticket for uh, yesterday's uh, feast, but I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next year. Yeah. We'll, we'll take care of that after worship. We got you. <laughs> also, those who are joining us on Facebook, when you have an opportunity, uh, gather your emblem so that you can join us uh, in communion uh, later on in the service. And last but not least is Doug here. Doug is going to come before us now and give us um, our... I'll let Doug tell you. <laughs> oh, I know you got it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, this is under the category of stewardship. Uh, I don't know if we've ever approached this issue under stewardship, though. Um, but we thought we'd try something a little different this year. And one of the issues that sometimes comes up with people um, who are in the position of asking others to participate in stewardship is that people will look at a report like this and all of you can see this, right? <laughs> this is actually a balance sheet that we use at the church council meeting. And on the balance sheet, it has the assets of the church as far as financial assets, and it has the fund balances, which are obligations of the church. Now, the obligations of the church, it's not like we need to pay somebody, but we have those funds for certain purposes. Now, I'm going to pick out one particular fund, and that's the uh, Maxine Anderson Estate Fund. And can anybody guess how much is in that fund, just generally? Oh, did I hear a million? OK, somebody reads their newsletter. <laughs> okay, now, some time ago, Maxine Anderson made a decision that when she passed, she wanted her estate to go to this church. That was a very big deal. And I'm not sure I remember exactly when, I think it was the early 2000s. And, you know, to me, there's somewhat of a danger when people see, oh, I'm giving to somebody, the church, that really doesn't need my money, because I sure don't have a million. But let's try to think of it in a different way. At one point in her life, Maxine Anderson thought, what is really important to me? And she thought, maybe the work of Jesus Christ in this world is important. And we don't know exactly what led Maxine Anderson to decide to do this. But in my mind, it was the Holy Spirit. You know, God's moving hand in this world. And we certainly have needed this at Emmanuel over the past decade or more because we've had budgets that have not been funded 
by what all of us collectively give in our contributions every week. But we still want to carry on the work of the church. And we have big plans for the future because if you look around at the world around us, here in Ferguson, St. Louis County, and generally, you can see there are a lot of people who are lost, who are hurting. Contrast that to yesterday here at this church. We had so many people who were working together. There were so many people who came and visited us to have our worst mart meal. And I don't know if you've had the opportunity to be here yesterday, but you had so many people who were just thrilled to be back here just to share a meal with us. Now, that's just one day. We have so many opportunities like we have today and after this service to share in fellowship and to learn about the love of Jesus. So we have this big amount of money, but we've been using it. And this amount of money hasn't diminished much over those years. And there's a lot of reasons why, and I could give you a much longer talk on that. If you'd like, stop me. If, you know, I could ask for a stop. raise of hand. You're oh, <laughs> Tim is already saying stopped. So one of the things um, that the church council looks at is, you know, obviously the people who turn in pledge cards, how much they're pledging. But I think even more important, because I know a lot of times people are in circumstances where they can't, you know, really come up with the number that they feel comfortable and promising to give. If you're in a situation like that, turn in a pledge card saying, I want to give this mark on there, but I don't know how much. Because that shows us that you're wanting to, and to me, it's the participation. I see a lot more people today than I've seen in several weeks. We look at that too, because having a church with no people is sort of pointless. So, you know, going back to Maxine Anderson, when she decided she was going to give, and the way that the fund has been used, to me, that's sort of a miracle. Now, Pastor and I were talking the other day, yesterday, about a minor miracle that occurred relating to Worsmart. And I'll let Sarah Clazing share that minor miracle with you. The trays. And so, so, you know, today in today's modern age, a lot of people, because we have minor miracles in our pocket, like our cell phone, or we drive minor miracles like our vehicles, or we go on an airplane and fly across an ocean, like we a lot of times don't see miracles because we're spoiled. But in Maxine Anderson's gift, she gave that gift, and it has helped carry us through times that have been 
very hard here in Ferguson, very hard in the United States. But that couldn't carry the church. Does anybody have an idea? Just round off to the nearest 100,000, what our budget is this year. OK, I'll, I'll ask for a show of hands. How many of you think it's a million dollars? Raise your hands if you do. 900,000. OK, I'll go lower. 600,000. OK, I see quite a few hands. 500,000. You win. <laughs> Jennifer over here, she's smiling. It's like she knows all this stuff. So how many years would our budget be covered by the Anderson estate? If the Anderson estate, a little over a million. How many years? Two. You know what would happen if everybody decided, let somebody else do it? At the end of two years, do you think we would have a church? No. So when I see all of the funds, and the Maxine Anderson estate is just one of the funds, all of the funds are where somebody has been moved by God's spirit to help the work of this church, the work of Jesus Christ telling us to make disciples. So please, when you're filling out your pledge card, put some amount that the Spirit leads you. And if you can't decide on that amount, to say that you'll give. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And lastly, um, your, your gifts or your, your actions, they are noticed. Uh, just this morning, uh, Julie was filling up the blessing box, and someone stopped by and said, you know, thank you. So the work that we're doing is needed, because God has given us that task to do that. So continue to pour out from your heart. Are there any visitors here, first-time visitors, old-time visitors? I just want to acknowledge you if you're a first-time visitor. Uh, you could have worshipped anywhere this morning, but I thank you for being here at Emmanuel United Church of Christ. I hope something is said or done that will inspire your heart to visit us again if you're from out of town or if you're in town. Feel free to come by anytime when we're here to worship with us. And again, thank you for being in worship. Now let us worship God.
Please join me in the call to worship. Come, a great cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we gather. May their stories open a space for the Spirit to enter us anew. May the God of every generation form us anew for this generation. Please join me in our invocation. God of every age and time, inspire us today with memories of saints whose energy still lingers, hovering around and within us as encouragement and strength. Wrap us anew with felt sense of your persistent presence, granting a new energy to offer you everything of our hearts minds and soul. Yes, love of life, root us and ground us in this, and let it be more than enough for today as we gather in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Our first reading this morning is from the book of Psalms 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 6. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how the ancestors treated their prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If slum someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. A prayer of transformation and new life. Loving God, grant us grace to release everything too much or too little into your transforming fire of refinement. Sear in us the strength of your saints, generous and gentle, focus and fears, just enough to answer every devilish temptation, distracting or denying your holy hope for our reformation. Yes, love forms us anew from the inside out, centering others ahead of every selfishness that dares us to choose anything less than you. Release us from the burdens and brokenness of our own making, that we may be ready to meet you in every ordinary saints whose paths cross ours in the gifts of this day. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus tells us that the Holy One is a God of grand reversal. Weeping turns to rejoicing. Hunger is answered with fullness. Honesty of heart is answered with grace upon grace. Every energy that diminished is interrupted with a newness of life made possible by the one who is always searching us out with forgiven love. In Jesus, God revealed that grace and forgiveness has already arrived, and it includes you and me. It is the good news. You can trust it with your life. The saints knew it, and now you do too. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God is still the same God. God who answers Jehoshaphat, Paul, and Silas when they praised him in the moment of need. And God will do the same for us today. It does not matter what we need or what our needs are, whether they are big or small, God can handle them all. You've heard the Psalms read this morning. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your maker. O people of Jerusalem, exult in your king. Praise his name with dancing, accompanied by tambourine and harp. For the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the faithful rejoice that he honors them. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Let the praise of God be in their mouths and a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains. To execute the judgment written against them. This is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. So this morning, for a few moments, that our minds, I would like to preach on this thought, the power in praise, the power in your praise. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks. We give you praise for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our lives. Now, God, we ask that you speak to us now. Speak, Holy Spirit, for your people are listening. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The power of praise, the power of your praise. Praises to God and the effective use of God's word are two powerful and effective weapons to aggressively oppose the enemy. So what is the definition of praise? Praise means to commend, to applaud, to magnify. For Christians, or for you and me, Praising God is an expression of worshiping and glorifying the Lord. When we praise God, we humble ourselves and center our attention upon the Lord with heartfelt expression of love, admiration, and thanksgiving. Praising God should be our way of life. But unfortunately, my friends, some people think that praise is something that only takes place in church. However, praise should be a part of our lifestyle, part of our daily prayer, part of our daily life at work, in your car, at home, in bed, anywhere, Schnooks, Deerberg, Home Depot, wherever you are, you should always praise God. Because when we worship and praise God, we are focusing upon God, who has the power and the majesty and the desire to deliver us from fear, oppression, and depression. Whatever we face in this world, we need to stay focused on the throne room and praise God at all times. So let us unpack this thing that we Talking about, that I'm talking about, the idea of praise. So the purpose of praise, 
The psalmist tells us in, in the 18th division, verse 3, that the almighty God is worthy of our praise and worship. Praise God because he is God and God is worthy to be praised. Praise God for the battles because God has already won the battles. The battles that already been fought have been won. Praise God because God has a perfect plan to give us victory and glorify him in the process. Praise is an expression of faith. Praise declares that we believe God is with us and God is in control of the outcomes of all our circumstances. Praise is a sacrifice. What do I mean by praise is a sacrifice? Sacrificial praise is something that we offer to God, not just because we feel like it, but because we believe in God. We love God and we believe God is worthy of our praise. Because Psalms 150 and 6 says, let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The act of praise is something that is for every living person, every living creature, breathing, every individual. Not only people, but God has given animals and, and birds and so on the opportunity to praise him. That's why it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. David tells us in Psalms 22 and 3 that God promised to inhabit the praise of his people. In other words, our praise and worship ushers in to the presence of God. When we praise and worship God, the presence of God will fill every situation that we are facing. And we will experience victory in all our battles. You ever go into a battle knowing that you've already won? That's what you praise God about. Some people think that worship is a response after the Holy Spirit moves them. But it's the other way around. The Holy Spirit moves when we praise and worship. Lifting up Jesus Christ through praise and worship invokes the Lord's presence and power to flow in our midst. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Praise also elevates us into God's presence. Paul and Silas knew how to lift up their hearts above their troubles and enter into God's presence and power. Through praise and worship, their hearts were raised into the joyous presence and peace of God which allowed God's power to operate in their circumstance. So if you read Acts 16, 22 through 26, but I'm going to do a spoiler alert because I'm going to tell you how it ends. Verse 26, because see, Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were locked up in the lower, lower dungeons of the jail, beneath the jail. But verse 26 says, suddenly, Say suddenly. There was an earthquake so violent that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. Praise. Praise. That's what happens. You see, praise defeats our enemies and grants us victory through the divine intervention our praise puts evil to fight. Evil will run. Evil will go the other way. So scripture tells us another example. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, was vastly outnumbered by a huge army that was attacking his kingdom. He announced a fast and sought the Lord with all the people. They got together and collectively, and they fast and prayed. The Lord heard their cry and promised them victory. Now watch this. Then Jehoshaphat sent singers 
worshipers ahead of his army as they went to meet the enemy. As they praised and worshiped the Lord, the Lord caused the enemies of Judah to fight amongst themselves and destroy themselves. As a veteran myself, how wonderful that would be if we got our equipment together and we're going into battle, we just stood there and just watched them defeat themselves. But praise, my friends, is the power you have in your life. You see, when we praise and worship the Lord, the Lord will cause confusion in the enemy's camp and make them destroy themselves. When God's people begin to praise God's name, it sends the demons running and it releases the power and might of God on our behalf. So this is the part I like. Praise motivates us to live a godly life. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Why do I say that? Because praise demands that we open ourselves, our hearts to God which oftentimes reveals the clutter and all the dysfunction that has displaced God's presence in our lives. Praise demands our confession and our repentance. Praise purges us. Praise is a purifying agent. It cleanses the soul. The more we praise and worship the Lord, the more we desire to be more in God's will for us. Praise increases our joy. Joy is contagious. Have you ever start laughing and others just start laughing because you're laughing? They don't know why you're laughing, but everybody, see, you're laughing. See that? In Romans 14, Paul tells us that the kingdom of God is not about living in fear, keeping rules, but its joy is a pleasing relationship with God, fueled by the Holy Spirit. That, my friends, is a, is a purpose of praise. Now, let's look at the pattern of praise. There are many actions involved with praise to God. There's verbal expressions admiration, thanksgiving, singing, playing instruments, saying amen, clapping your hands. But true worship is not just simply going through that motion. Jesus spoke about hypocrisy of the Pharisees who, who worship was only an outward expression showing nothing from his heart. You remember about the Pharisees and the, and the tax collector. Now pay close attention. Praise involve our body and voices. Psalm 63, three and four says, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call your name. Praise also involve instruments of music. Carolyn and, and Kathy and Doug ushers us into worship every Sunday with music, which is the organ. Today we got the piano and the organ. Scripture tells us praise, to praise him. Praise him with the sounds of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the flute. Praise him with the clashing of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise. Now, two of my two favorite praise. Praise with emotions and praise with our life. Praise with our emotions and praise with our life. Oh, clap your hands. All ye people, shout to the God with a voice of triumph. 
For I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth because therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, everything, do it for the glory of God. So there, you have the purpose of praise, the pattern of praise, and lastly, the power of praise. Satan has already defeated, has already been defeated by Jesus, and we share in that victory over the forces of darkness. So when we begin to praise and worship God, we enforce that, we reinforce or enforce the defeat of our current circumstance. Our praise is powerful because of the following reasons. When we praise God, in difficult situations, God will go ahead of us and God will cause a breakthrough for us. When we praise God, it takes our focus off our problems off our weaknesses, and off of our issues. When we praise God, we place our focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, from whom our blessings come from. When we praise God, praise takes our eyes off of our problems. When we praise God, praise brings God's presence into our situation. When we praise God, God descends, and the atmosphere around us changes. When we praise God, God performs miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives. When we praise God, curses are broken and blessings flow. When we praise God, friends, praise energizes God and makes God's silence all of our enemies. When we praise God, We experience deliverance from every chain that is holding us down. So as I close, let me say this. We don't have to wait for everything to be perfect before we decide to celebrate and praise God for what God is doing in our lives. Because if we do that, we probably will never celebrate. Praise is putting action behind our faith. Praise is about what God is capable of, not what we are capable of doing. God is still the same. God who answered Jehoshaphat, answered Paul and Silas when they praised him in the moment of their need. And he will do the same for us today. It doesn't matter what the needs are, whether they are big or small. God can handle them all. Praise is put in action behind faith in the middle of our situation. Therefore, remember the purpose of praise, a pattern of praise and the power of praise. So trust God continuously. In all your situation and lean not onto your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge God. And my friends, if you do this, you will experience the power of God through your praise. Amen and thank God. You can clap. Praise. Praise. It follows faith. That is so powerful. Because you know faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Then you follow that up with praise behind that. So you're thanking God for what God is about to do. And you don't even know what it is, and you're just excited. You're just happy. Isn't that awesome? Just thinking about what God is doing in my life. And I can get excited about it right now because I know it's good. Because all things work together for good. For those who love God or who are called according to his purpose. 
Mm. Hallelujah. All right. Even in the midst of our praise, we still have trials and tribulations. But we are given instructions by God's word that even in those situations, we can still praise God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are with us today and that we are able to join in worship on this day. Gather together, all believers. We offer our worship and admonition to you for you are worthy to be praised. We lift up our voices together to offer you all that are due to you. We thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. Please fill us with your spirit, and may we be full of grace, joy, and peace because of your presence in us. May your spirit power produce fruit within our lives. Thank you for all that you have blessed us with and for all that you have provided. Please help us to focus and to remain steadfast in your will as we go about our day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit is telling me to do to offer Christ to anyone here who don't know Jesus as their personal Savior. We received driver in this morning because we did that last Sunday. But here I want to offer anyone here who would like to go be in relationship with God. Give me your hand, but give God your heart. Is there anyone? Anyone among us? This is your opportunity. So we, you can understand what we're talking about when we talk about praising God and, and giving God all the glory and the, all the honor. Because this is what it's about. Is there anyone among us? Amen. Now we will begin our um, portion of our service, the service of remembrance. And please, at the end of service, the candle that we light for your loved one was yours to take. So each year, All Saints Day, we remember those members and friends of Emmanuel United Church of Christ who have died during the last year and received their right to Christian burial. So Isaiah tells us, but now, O God, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, saying, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will have or you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I trade their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. 
Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and from the west. I will say to the north and the south, bring my sons and my daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Amen. So I would like to invite Charlie, Nancy's already here, and Carolyn, and we will begin our service of remembrance. Charlie, you can just use that one. Jeanette Manning. Larry Prem. Gertrude Collins. Bob Bloomfield. Helen Krunagel. James Strughold. Brad Beck. Bud Heenan. Jim Smith. Jean Fortmeyer. Maureen Hatch, Dorothy Bangert, Brad Sneed, Mamie White, Al Jolenbeck, Brenda Barr, Don Martin, William Sanford, Becky Sitting Down, Mitzi Talian. Kevin Veeman, Norma Teese, please join me. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God. You gather all your people as one in the body of Christ, the church. Unite us with all the people of every time and place who have lived by your word and died in your love. Reassure us when we grieve that our loved ones are not lost to you. Prepare us for the day when we too may fully know the grand celebration of life everlasting we pray this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen.
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, given breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gifts of life itself. We thank you for making us in your image, for forgiving us when we act as though we have no, you have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We remember Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and in the beloved community of your church, we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise, for women and men of faith in every age who stands as witness to your love and justice with all the prophets, martyrs, and saints and all the company of heaven, we glorify you. Amen. We remember that on the, on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, celebrate Christ's resurrection, and await Christ's coming again. Amen. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and the leaven for the furtherance of your will in the world, in all the world. Amen. Through the broken bread, we, celebrate, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in new life Christ gives. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is offered for us. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are ready.
the bread of life, take and eat. A cup of blessing, take, drink all of it. Luke tells us that Jesus introduced a strange kind of arithmetic. He said, when you give things away, you actually have more. Maybe it's that we get more of what we really need. Freedom from the stuff that's so often that can hold us hostage, keeping us from a life that is truly free. The saints of old seems to know this, so we are invited to give not only because it helps others, but because by giving we are opened up to a fullness we could not otherwise have imagined. It is God's gift to us. May the joy of the saints be our joy today as we offer our gifts to God 
for the good of the world. Please stand for the doxology. Join me in the prayer of dedication. O giver of life, continue to form in us a transparent spirit that by our giving and our living, others may discover you. Reshape our priorities and grant us a willing vision to see and respond to those hidden saints who reveal something of you in the least likely way and in the most surprising places. Thank you for calling us into a life such as this and bless these gifts that we may be blessed others. Amen. Our closing hymn, God, dismiss us with your blessings. Page 439. I pray something was said to you personally through the song, through the scripture, or through the word that God has shared with us today that you can take in your life this week to give you strength and to encourage you to continue to go on and praise God for all things. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present you faultless before the, his presence with exceeding joy, the only wise God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.